I've gone down a deep rabbit hole for the oil and gas industry, and I have some wisdom to share that is not being widely discussed and why I believe that we are going to be on the greatest season for the oil and gas commodity. I'm Sean Pruitt, president of Kingdom Exploration. If you're interested in this channel, if you're interested in oil and gas news, this is the channel for you. Now, all eyes on China right now. Now, I know that we've all been hearing, yeah, China's uh, uh, demand is going to increase. It's going to turn around uh, the oil price. Okay. And now here's something you need to understand. Okay. You need to understand what happened with China. Okay. Everyone thought China's demand was going to increase, but there were things that he had to do before he lifted these COVID restrictions. Xi Jinping's ultimate goal is to become a super power. His pride says, I want to own the world. Okay. And so the only way to do that is to have the power of being being able to print as much money as you want without reducing the value of your dollar. The U.S. is the only country that's been able to do that. And the reason why is because our dollars are settled. When you buy commodities such as oil and gas or gold or most uh, commodities out there, it's settled in the USD. And the reason why it's because because the USD is widely traded. We have our central banking system in every country except for two, okay? Now, Xi Jinping wants this power, but there are several steps that need to be taken in order to set the stage for being able to get his wand to be settled in the, uh, to, to, to settle the oil purchases in the wand. Uh, number one, he formed BRICS, and he thought that if he could get Russia, because Russia was sanctioned, he was cut off from, from the capital of the USD, the most powerful currency in the world. He was cut off from it, okay? And so Russia, his bargaining chip was cutting off Europe and letting them starve of energy. And so China went to Russia to save them, say, hey, listen, we're going to buy your oil. We're going to buy your oil. We're going to stabilize your country, okay? But his ultimate plan was to bring power to the petrol one, power to the one, to his dollar by getting Russia to buy and sell his oil in the one. Well, that didn't happen. He wasn't that desperate. Okay. And then Xi Jinping went to uh, Saudi Arabia. He buttered them up as a king. A king brings gifts because he wants something. Xi Jinping signed 32 of some of the largest contracts in the world because because China has a massive economy and they could buy, sell, and trade like nobody's business. One of the, the second largest economy in the world, he has the power to do that. And he's the only one that can make these. I mean, he imagine running America and being able to choose any country in the world to sign a contract with, with any commodity. Xi Jinping has that power, okay? And so he came in with intimidation, with an, an agenda, holding a massive carrot in front of these guys in the Middle East to butter them up with 32 massive contracts. But his ultimate goal was to get his wand into play and to settle these purchases in the wand. And so Saudi Arabia met with the UAE and Africa and all these other countries, and they all decided, no, we are going to continue to buy and sell using the USD. And their simple answer was, your economy is weak, and we could only use your currency to buy more Chinese goods and services. And there's very, very few countries that will accept your currency, and the US dollar is the most powerful currency in the world. So China lost lost with Russia, lost with the Middle East. And his ultimate goal was not for energy security. His ultimate goal was to be a superpower like America, and he failed. But those guys are very patient. They're very long-winded people. And he's going to try again, okay? And so here's the deal. Xi Jinping has no choice but to open up the doors to his economy and remove COVID restrictions, okay? Now, he reduced, I mean, imagine this, before going in to, to sign a massive contract, if one decision from you can reduce the cost of that contract saving billions of dollars, would you not do it? Especially if you're a dictator like Xi Jinping and you don't care about your people. 
he put the COVID restrictions in place not to protect them from COVID, but to reduce the demand of energy while he signed these contracts with Russia and Saudi Arabia. Now those contracts are signed. He's got energy security. He has enough oil to do what he wants to do. That's number one. The second reason why he's going to open up the doors to his economy is because the Middle East made it very clear. We're not settling our contracts in the WAN simply because your economy is faltering. So now his only option is to grow his economy. So people will start respecting his currency so it could be a superpower like America. So he has every, there's absolutely nothing stopping him from opening up the doors to his economy. And I foresee uh, uh, any day now, he's going to rip away these COVID restrictions and he's going to get his, his, his economy booming. And he knew this because China has four times the population of America, yet we use almost as much oil as China does. Okay. Watch what happens when he opens up the doors, doors to his economy. He doesn't care if his, his, his people become richer. He doesn't care if his people praise his name. <clears throat> he cares about becoming a superpower and that's it. And the only way to do that is to make his people rich, is to make his economy boom. And that's it. Okay. And so ultimately at the end of the day, there's nothing preventing China from increasing their economy and removing uh, the limitations of, of uh, COVID restrictions. Okay. Now, the reason why oil prices are low right now, it's the big reason and, and I, I don't think a lot of people understand this, but uh, Jeff Curry did a good job explaining it. So here's the deal. The, the reason why oil prices have dropped, even though fundamentally we're the strongest we've ever been, okay? The reason why uh, oil prices averaged $90 a barrel last year and not 120 was simply because of what they are doing to the cash flows, okay? Now, inflation is too much money chasing too few goods, Okay. Now the opposite of that is too few goods, but not much money. Okay. So when you have too much money chasing too few goods, it causes the goods to increase. Okay. And that's what we're seeing today. When you, when you, when you buy food or groceries or various items, the prices are higher. Okay. But when you increase the federal rate hikes, those federal rate hikes reduces the amount of capital available to buy these goods. Okay. Now we've reduced because the, the, the increased rate hikes, we've reduced about 50% of the capital out there. Now there was an oil price rally. Fundamentally speaking, everybody was excited about oil, but there wasn't enough cash in the open markets because of the reduction of capital to chase the commodity rally. So it killed it. Okay. And so for instance, if you as an investor saw the opportunity to dump a tremendous amount of capital because you knew oil prices were going to rise, but you didn't have the cash on hand and you used it for uh, various things, you're not going to chase the commodity rally. So it killed it. It destroyed it. And that's what happens. I mean, it reduces the amount of capital spent on, on, on houses, on cars, on living, on entertainment, everything else. And so, so, so that's what we're seeing today. And so the tightness of capital in, in, in lowers inflation. Okay. Now, and, and, and here's the other reason why oil prices did not rally like they should have. The Russian disruptions did not materialize. Of course, the COVID lockdowns in China, uh, the federal rate increased 325 basis points, causing a strong dollar. Um, and and, and, and it, the hike caused a 30% uh, uh, sell-off. Okay. Now, here's something that is happening in the economy right now of China. You're seeing an increased bookings for the holidays. Okay, you're seeing, uh, statistically speaking, massive more amount of people using the subways, traveling, uh, et cetera, is happening in China right now. So it, the, it, the growth is substantial. Okay, uh, the Europe and India PMI uh, is, is up and it's rebounding. So you're seeing that country. Now, India's oil demand, based on what they're saying, we're looking at over the years for their demand to double. And you got to understand something. If you look at what happened in 2004, um, they were increasing. They had several federal rate hikes like, like you're seeing today. 
Okay. Not as much, but that's what you saw today. But then they reduced the federal rate hikes. Okay. Then China, uh, uh, China's economy was stimulated. And that's why you saw a massive oil price in 2007. And so we're seeing the same thing similar today. Okay. And so you have the strategic petroleum reserve, uh, that, that was a artificial supply that million barrels a day, they, they, they dumped 230 million barrels of oil in the markets during that, during last year, all the while every single strategic reserve for oil was reduced on the global scale. How is it that we could dump 230 million barrels of oil from our reserves into the open market and still everyone else's reserves are dropping because there's not enough oil supply, period, okay? But fundamentally speaking, oil should be $120 a barrel and it's not, okay? Jeff Curry says the 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 bearish case for oil is 130 and but he says, nobody's buying my story. Nobody's buying. It, it's not based upon fundamentals. There's not enough cash chasing those, the, the oil and people are scared to invest in that uh, industry because they don't know what to expect. Okay. Now the, and now, and here's the deal. So not only is the strategic petroleum reserve uh, flooding the markets, that's over. Now they have to buy back those 230 million barrels of oil that they flooded the market with. So now we're going to see the opposite. You got China demand looking to increase by 2 million barrels of oil a day. You got Russia supply dropping around a million barrels of oil a day. Uh, and, and you got uh, OPEC supporting higher oil prices. Okay. And so OPEC's in the driver's seat now before they were competing with America. And so if, if OPEC curbed oil production, oil prices wouldn't drop because Shell oil, U.S. American Shell was uh, filling the gap, and then it would just make them richer, and then they would just take more market share. So OPEC had to continue e exporting an oil output consistent, even though oil prices averaged fifty dollars a barrel, because they were playing the waiting game. They you they knew that the U.S. would eventually run out of energy. And, they, and, and there was an oil glut for years, and that oil glut is gone, it's over, and you're seeing the, the demise of shale. So now OPEX is in the driver's seat again. Got several other uh, factors going on that I'm not gonna go into. This video would, would, would get a little too long. Right now, oil prices are uh, $73 a barrel, WTI crude, Brent crude is at $78 a barrel, even with that, even though that everyone is, is fearful of recession fears and nobody knows what to expect. And so right now, now we're at over $70 a barrel. For the first time in human history, we have a, over 100 million barrel a day demand. Okay, now that's fluctuating because of the recession fears and everything else. But you, you, this year, we're going to see over 100 million barrel a day demand. We've reached 8 billion people. And for the first time, uh, we are not increasing, we're, we're increasing our population, but we're not increasing our oil discoveries and we're not increasing our oil production. Uh, and we're seeing a decline in U.S. shale along with every single uh, uh, oil formation out there. So anyways, I'm Sean Pruitt, president of Kingdom Exploration. Again, if you like this channel, if you're interested in the oil and gas industry, uh, please subscribe. If you're interested in a look at oil and gas deals, I'm involved in many, many oil deals. And if you have a great oil deal, if you're an operator and you made a massive discovery on your land and you need capital uh, to take advantage of the area that you're in, I'm not in interested in high risk deals. Um, send it to me. I would, I would love to take a look at it. Go to my description below, fill out the form. And if, you, if you're interested in investing in oil and gas, uh, go to my description below and fill out the form. All right, guys. Thanks.